Okay, are we on? Okay. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. I want to welcome you to Kol Haruach Messianic Fellowship, especially those online. Actually, you online. I uh, want to welcome you. If you want a copy of these notes that I'm going to be studying, we're going to be studying from today, uh, just send an email to Rabbi Elliot Haas at uh, Kol Haruach, K O L H A R U A C H, at gmail.com. Okay. We are on another double portion. That means another double blessing. The portion, the double portion is called Achare Mot Kedoshim. Okay. So in some versions, I heard them just say Achare Kedoshim. But actually, it's Achare Mot Kedoshim. Okay. And if you, if you put it together, it's like this. Because these two portions are often together. Some years, they're not. But most years, they are. It means after the death, then holy. After the death is the first portion, Acharemot, and then holy is the second portion, Kiddoshim. Okay. So if you put it together, it's like saying after the destruction or death comes the kingdom. Okay. The Shabbat is consecrated, sanctified, hallowed, holy, sacred, appointed, separated, etc. Okay. Every Shabbat that we celebrate Shabbat is a rehearsal of the coming of the kingdom. Did you know that? This is not just a religious celebration. According to Colossians 2, 16 and 17, the Sabbath, the new, no, the food, drink, the Sabbath, the new moon, and the festivals are a shadow of things to come. And the substance is cast in the shadow is Yeshua. In other words, so this is prophetic. The Shabbat every week is prophetic, okay, because it's yet to come. We are practicing for a future Shabbat. A 1,000-year kingdom is what every week represents, every Shabbat represents. That's why God said it's holy, it is set apart. He didn't say now Sunday is a Shabbat or that any day could be the Shabbat, as there's some people out there who say that. No, he specified the day begins in the evening. He specified Friday evening and Saturday evening. He said, that is a holy day. And it's repeated over and over throughout the Torah. Okay, so. Now, the day begins in the, in the evening, right? Okay, so. What's the evening represent? It's darkness, right? Uh, so, how's the kingdom going to start? It's going to start in trouble. In in terrible wrath when God pours out his wrath but it's going to be very short because <laughs> you know what, what is the scripture that says this that well there's not a scripture that says this, it's darkest before the dawn okay but there is a scripture that says that uh, that uh, trouble comes and I'm probably not going this way trouble comes in the night but joy comes in the morning Yes. Trouble endures for the night, but joy comes in the morning, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is the, the picture of the future, the birth pangs, the terrible wrath of God that's going to follow by his glory. A glorious kingdom, but it's going to start off in great disaster, great trouble. Well, you know what? Throughout time, God put that in, in the woman because she. She, she went and, and went and ate at the tree along with Adam. Her, her childbirth probably wasn't painful, but she, she would bear children in pain, okay? The labor pains, okay? Everything okay, Jeff? Uh, it's pixely. Oh, okay. All right, so for a darkness, a form of darkness, a form of birthing, process, birth pains. And that's what we're doing right now. But you know what the end result is? Kiddoshim. Holy. <laughs> Kiddoshim. You endure, endure the destruction to bring us to the glory. Okay? After the death. After whose death? The Hebrew word for death is mut. 
Actually, it's vade, and a root word is mot, and it means to be executed, to die. Okay. Now, we're not going to go through all this, but this is connected to the two sons of Aharon, Nadav and Avihu. Okay. Nadav and Avihu, in past portions, they died because they went, when the glory of God had appeared at the camp, they went and they offered up incense, which God did not tell them to do. Listen, when the glory is here and the power of God is manifest, you can't do things on a whim. It's very dangerous to miss, to, to have disrespect for God. It will cost you your life. Why? Because there's such going to be such power. It's it's kind of like we talked about Uzzah and the Ark before we started today. Okay, Uzzah touched the Ark and he, he died because he thought it was going to fall. He wasn't permitted. God gave the power and the, and the anointing to the priest to carry the Ark. And not all the priests, some of them. Some were given gifting to carry the Ark. Okay. No one else was to touch him. They would die because there's such a holiness and a power. But the only one who was permitted to touch him were those priests who carried the ark. And it started to fall. This is when David was bringing it to Jerusalem. And Uzzah came, this guy named Uzzah, a friend of David's, came up to try to, thought it was going to fall. And he touched it and he, he got killed. He died. You got to treat the things of God, the holy things of God, as holy. Don't think you're the one holding everything up. There's going to be a glory coming and a fear of the Lord along with it. And anybody comes in to try to control it because, oh, I know the glory. I can control it. I'm used to it. I waited for this time. And now I'm going to come in and take my lead. And they're going to get zapped. Because this is not a work of man that's coming. It's a work of God. It's, he needs to be treated as holy. Okay. There's going to be a glory coming. Okay. So, so, but here, you know, you might think, okay, they were zealous for God. But they did something that they, God did not tell them to do. But in a way, there's something very interesting about their names. Look at the bottom of page one. Okay. Uh, after the death, we immediately we start talking about Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. The, there's a service that was done, and it's prophetic. And we need to see the meaning of their names, of the names of Nadav and Abihu. Uh, you know, it doesn't actually say they sinned against God. It doesn't say it anywhere that Nadav and Abihu sinned against God. However, they did not treat him as holy, and they got zapped, and they lost their lives. Okay? we got to be very careful about how we handle it. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. That's what the scriptures say. We need to respect the things of God. Uh, remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira? Okay? Where they promised the Holy Spirit, that they were going to bring so much money. And they both got zapped, didn't they? They lost their lives. They touched the holy. But they sinned against God. In their case, they sinned against God. Because they made a promise and they didn't keep it. Um, so, so, uh, we have to follow the leading of the Lord and not our own thing. Thinking that we are all that, we know. Oh, this is what we waited for. Uh-uh. You know, there's a lot of people that that are going to be coming in to the Lord in the coming days. Okay? They're going to become believers, okay? But we have got to treat the things of God as holy. There's a lot of people out there that are wanderers all over the place. They go from church to church. We call it the church hop, right? You know? And they're looking, and they want. They want to see the miracles and the signs and wonders, but what they don't understand is they don't have enough of the fear of the Lord in them. They just want to experience the glory. They don't want the truth. You know, they, they want to lead. And they're waiting for the glory to appear. And when the glory appears, there's a great danger to them. Because if they disrespect it, thinking that they know better, 
they're going to be like, their lives are going to be taken from them. So if you have any friends like that and think, well, I've been waiting for the glory, I'm ready for the glory. Are you really ready to have a fear of the Lord? That's what you need to tell them. Do you really have the fear of the Lord? Do you even know what it is to have the fear of the Lord? You need to warn them because those are the prime people that will, will be the oozes of our common day. The Ananias and the Sapphira. In a way, what I'm sharing about here today is, is, is like the fear of the Lord. In a sense. Not fear like, oh, you know, I'm afraid. No, more like respectful fear. Great. Respectful. Thank you, Captain. Respect to God for his holiness and his greatness. Be holy as I am holy. He says to after the, the book of Leviticus, the book of Aigra, uh, and throughout the scriptures. But be holy as I am holy is taken for granted by so many people. They don't even understand it. They think it's just being nice and doing kind things to one another. To be different from the world. To not do what the world does. Oh, everybody's gathering together and they're, and they're getting their Christmas gifts and they're celebrating Christmas. Did God create Christmas? Okay. We don't do what everybody else does. We're different. God made us different. We're holy as he is holy. How is the world going to ever know or see him or understand him if we're the same as everybody else? The compromise that took place under Emperor Constantine to put an end to the persecution of the Christians was too great. The sacrifice what they gave up was the move of the Holy Spirit and the power of God. To have peace. Okay? They they created religion. Okay? And they quenched the Holy Spirit. Now there's been moves of the Holy Spirit throughout time since, but among the remnant, it should be among everybody in the church. But it's only it's only been among the remnant. But what's about to come is the remnant is about to explode. There's going to be a move and a harvest, and, and this is going to be restored back. God is going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, everyone. And they're going to be coming and running in to churches and running into places and wanting to, to know this Messiah that they feel his presence. And even people who are not believers are going to feel his power and his presence. Because he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Everything. Okay. It's going to be the final act. The final one before the Lord returns. Now, how long will it last? It could last a long time. Or it might be short. I don't know. God is going to do some unusual things. Okay. and But I do know he's going to put his children, his, all of us as believers, back into positions of authority he meant for them. Not for their benefit, for his glory. I'm telling you, it's going to be unlike anything we have ever known. And it's going to be for the purposes of harvest, of souls coming in. Because the time is very short. I don't know how long it is. Um, I'm going to say it's four years, or five years, or six years, or ten years, or twenty years, or thirty years, or forty. I don't think it's that long, but it could be. Who am I to say? God knows. We've had 2,000 years under the time of the wilderness, which was symbolic of three months between Shavuot, or Pentecost, and Rosh Hashanah. And then there's a fourth month. So three months is 2,000 years. What's one month? <laughs> it could be as long as 100 years, for all I know. But all I know is this whole time that's coming is going to be full of his glory and his bri and bridal preparation. Okay. And God is going to raise up the bride. Okay, now let me explain what that means. There's giftings. There is uh, things coming out of heaven to us. Prosperity. Now, I don't mean prosperity. Oh, look, we're wealthy. I mean creations, creativity, yeah. abilities. Things are going to be released that, that you would think, well, why did he give it to me? How about God sends you a cure for for uh, for cancer, for let's say leukemia, and and He just downloads it into you, okay, and you send it to somebody who can do it, okay, and they'll show you this is how 
and you get your name on that, not for your glory, but for his glory, okay? That God said, well, why did he give it to you and not to me? I'm the one trained in this. You don't know anything about medicine, okay? This is just a, a little type and example. This is going to happen a lot. Unusual creations are going to come from the believers, and people are going to want that. It's going to come from those of his remnant, those who are fired for the Lord. God is going to release it to he might call some of us up into heaven and say, I have this, this thing I want you to create out of heaven, and it's for my glory, and you are to create it and bring it down to them on the earth. Okay, You are going to bring this down to, the, to them. Okay, For my glory, so I get the glory out of it. Okay, <laughs> okay so, so they'll say an invention, let's say, of flying cars. Or flying buses or something like that. Okay. He says, see, here, I've given it to you. Okay. <laughs> and it's like he's and then you know, no one it's gonna have your name on it. They're gonna be drawn to you. It says, What did you get? This oh the Holy Spirit gave it to me. He took me up to heaven, or or I had a dream and I saw it. Okay. <laughs> and I'm telling you, unusual things. Musicians who are trained and and Know their stuff. Know how to do music. And God's going to re release powerful songs to people who don't know anything about music. Maybe me. You know, I don't know. Maybe one of us. Okay. All right. So what I'm saying is there's going to be unusual things happening because God is going to put it on his remnant, his righteous, so that he gets the glory. Amen. It's not for men. Amen. Well, I got this wonderful song, you know, and 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 look, you know, it's playing on the radio, and it's like it's, you know, and look at look at how great my name is. I don't know. So he's gonna bring it to the people who know that they didn't get it, and they're gonna get the credit for it because it goes to him. Yeah. It Amen. bypasses the person. Amen. This is what's coming. Amen. The glory that's coming. Stay out of the way. Don't. Claim the credit. No, it doesn't go to you. It goes to him. This is what's coming. Okay. Yom Kippur. Well, first of all, let's look at the two people that were killed because they touched the holy. Nadav. We're on the top of page two. Nadav means generous. It, his root name, Nadav, is, is incite or impel, make willing. Okay. Avihu means he is my father. So let's kind of put this together. Okay, I have it there on, on the first paragraph of the commentary on page two. Yom HaKiforim is still unfulfilled in the future feast that we observe to prepare for its fulfillment. Okay, the question is what happens that brings about the fulfillment of Yom Kippur? This is not the reason why Nadav and Avihu died, but let's turn something bad into something good. Their names means generously volunteers, and he himself is my father. Yeshua volunteered to give his life for us, to bring us back to the father, who is his father and our father. Do you see what their names mean? Their names mean generous, willing, to, for he is my father. Meaning, like, so, so Messiah gave his own life, was willing to give his own life, was generous in his grace to give his own life to bring us back to the Father. That's what their names mean. So even in their death, there's a meaning to learn about them. Okay, so... So, you know, something good can turn out into something bad. It always does. God turns everything from bad to be good, right? Yeshua volunteered to give his life for us. That's in Titus 2, 13 and 14, John 3, 16. And let's look at John 10, 14 and 15. John 10, 14 and 15 says this. I am the good shepherd. 
I know my own and my own know me. Even as the Father knows, knows me and I know the Father. And I laid down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep which are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will, shall hear my voice and they shall become one flock with one shepherd. Now, you know who those other sheep are? The Gentiles. The Jews and the Gentiles together. Mm -hmm. So he has one flock of the Jews in Israel and another flock of the Gentiles who have been joined too. And he says, I will make them one. They will have one shepherd, one flock. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's, that's what he did for us to bring us back to the Father. After the death of Moses, second paragraph. After, I'm sorry, after the death of Messiah comes holiness. So do you, do you see, right? At the first, the double portion, Akhara means after the death of Kiddushin means holy, right? Uh, and Nadav and Abihu died, but there's something that comes out of it. After Yeshua died, comes comes holiness. What we what we finally understand and understand is real holiness. So when the Ten Commandments and the stone tablets were brought down from Mount Sinai, the children of Israel had corrupted themselves with the golden calf. Remember that. And Moshe destroyed those tablets. When they were redone, they were forever. This is metaphoric for so much. The first coming of Yeshua and the second coming of Yeshua. The letter of the law kills, but the spirit of the law heals. Okay. The death and resurrection of Messiah. Okay. That's in Romans 7, 1 to 12. And Galatians 4, 21 to 31. We can't be holy through the letter of the law alone. It is only through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, that we can be holy as the Torah states in these portions. That's 2 Corinthians 3. Are we beginning to commend ourselves again, or do we need, as some, letters of commendation to you or from you? You are our scroll, written on our hearts, known and read by all men, being manifest that you are the letter of Messiah cared for by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not with tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. With such confidence we have through Messiah toward God. Not that we are adequate in ourselves to consider anything as coming from ourselves. But our adequacy is from God. Who also made us adequate <coughs> as servants of a new covenant. Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And if the ministry of death in letters engraved on stones came with glory, so that the sons of Israel could not look intently at the face of Moses because of the glory on his face, fading as it was, how shall the ministry of the Spirit fail to be even more with glory? For if that ministry of condemnation has glory, much more does the ministry of righteousness abound in glory. For indeed, what had glory, in this case, has no glory on account of the glory that surpasses it. For if that which fades away was with glory, much more than that which remains is in glory. Having therefore such a hope, we use great boldness in our speech, and are not as Moshe, Moses, who used to put a veil over his face that the sons of Israel might not look intently at the end of what was fading away, but their their hearts were hardened for until this very day and the reading of the Old Covenant. The same veil remains unlifted because it is removed in Messiah. But to this day, whatever Moshe has read, a veil lies over their heart. But whenever a man turns to Jehovah, to, to the Lord, a veil is taken away. And the Lord, now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, 
with unveiled face, beholding in the mirror the glory of Jehovah, are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. Why am I saying all this? Because we're not talking about the temporary here. The letters, words, don't do this, do that, can do nothing for us. But what is the Spirit of the Lord saying? What is the Spirit of the Lord saying in, in the, this Shabbat? What is the Spirit of the Lord saying in, in the Sabbath and the new moon and the festivals and the kosher laws? It doesn't matter. You know, we don't eat certain things or not eat certain things because the words of don't eat these things or eat these things. There's a spiritual reason. There's spiritual reasoning. God wants us to use our spiritual reasoning, not our physical reasoning. Yes, the physical reason will later back up the spirit, but you got to understand it's the spirit. Okay. Have I shared with you, if I was just to share out of this portion and tell you, these two men died because they touched the holy. Okay. And, and then, and then uh, you know, this is what happens when you you touch the holiness of God. You must respect the Shabbat. You must respect the Torah. That's basic. But it's if you talk about it in the spirit, we're talking about death. Death comes. Okay? And then when we're born again, we now can see. In other words, we now are walking a different life. We're following what the spirit of the Lord is saying in this story. Okay? The, the that uh, Nadav Arabihu represented the death of Messiah. Why did he die? Because he took all sins upon himself. Nadav Arabihu sinned against the Lord because they didn't listen to God to do what they did. They went and they did what they did. I know I said earlier that they didn't sin because it doesn't literally say they sinned. But they died as a result of what they did. Okay, So they did sin. Okay, Yeshua took all sin upon himself. So the Dava Avihu represents Yeshua, taking all sin upon himself. Why? So we can walk by the Spirit. We can we can walk by the fear of the Lord and respect to God because He gave us the way to be holy through His blood. He gave us the way to walk in the Spirit, not by the letter, but by the Spirit. We celebrate Shabbat looking for Messiah, looking for what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Now, this is a fine thing. I, I want you guys to understand this because there's there's going to be in the future, there already is, people who just go from extreme to extreme. Okay, I was taught wrong in Christianity. Something's going to happen, and people are going to be disheartened by religious Christianity. It's coming. Okay? I don't know how, because it hasn't happened yet. Okay? What I'm saying is people are going to get this hardened of the lies and the false teachings that have been done in the name of Christianity. The rapture. No, not yet. Okay, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, so they're going to be this hardened. No, it's going to be this hardened. Something's coming now while we're living. It's going to be this hardening. And they're going to go to the extreme, some of them, and they're going to want to go to the letter of the law. We have got... To bring them back to balance. you There's going to be people out there teaching the letter of the law. And people are going to get caught off on that direction. But there's going to be some of us that would remain at the right place. Where we're understanding the Torah from the spirit. Not from just the physical. We do we learn the physical too. But what I'm saying is we're doing this by the spirit. There's a balance. He doesn't want us letter of the law people, and he doesn't want us super spiritual, and we don't care anymore about the letter of the law. There's a balance, okay? And we have to walk in the balance. But something is going to come to shape religion soon. I'm telling you, even in the coming days and weeks, such people's faith are going to be shaken. People who have been caught up in Catholicism, and Methodism, and uh, and even Pentecostalism, and and uh, Episcopalianism—I'm probably saying that wrong—but you know all these different things. 
that we have, all these isms, all these organized structures of men, they're going to be shaken. And they're going to be looking for answers. And we are the ones that have those answers. The balance of spirit and truth. Yeshua says that those who worship the Lord, that the ones that Yeshua desires to worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. The balance is the spirit. We don't want the letter of the law. We don't want just, you have to do this, you shouldn't do that, and everything will be good. Okay, uh-uh. That's just words. It's what is God speaking to us. Because he speaks through the spirit of the Torah. He speaks through that word. He speaks through the calendar. But by the spirit. And we have to know, you have to know how to walk by the spirit. I'm showing you this. This is beneath the surface. You can't see this. Okay, yeah, I have all sorts of commentary here, but uh, study of the word, okay, study of the words, okay. Uh, looking at what all these scriptures mean that God gave to, uh, to you know, Titus and to John and, and to, you know, John chapter 3, you know, 16, John chapter 10, 14 and 15, okay. R uh, Romans 7, 1 to 12, Galatians 4, 21 to 31. Listen, when people are coming to you and, and, and they want to know what God is doing because they see the Spirit on you, you need to tell them about how what God is saying. Like he has a calendar. And everything he does in the Spirit is by this calendar. And to connect them to the calendar, but connect them to the Spirit of the calendar, not just the letter, you know. God says he wants us to do the Shabbat. God says he wants us to do the Feast of Tabernacle. No. You got to tell them why do we do the Shabbat? Because it's the kingdom. Or why do we celebrate the new moon? Because the new moon means to be born again. But if you don't know that, you need. To, this is what some of the things you need to learn. We need to get ready for answers. Remember, be ready for an answer to anyone who has a question. Be ready to give them an answer. And there's going to come a there's a shaking coming of religion, and I'm telling you, it's coming. This is what we've been prepared for. And we need to have the answers. Okay, but not in arrogance. Not in, look at me. No, it's for his glory. Because we want him to say, well done, my good faithful servant. We want him to be pleased with us. We want him to get the glory. Because anything we get on this earth, our reward is down here. I don't want my reward down here. I want it up there. Right. Lay your treasures for neither moth or rust destroys. I don't want it here. So, you know, if someone says, I praise you and bells at your feet, and thank you for what you showed me, and it's like, no, the glory goes to him. Yeah, right. You need to direct them to thank him for the revelation. This is humility. Okay, so all these scriptures, um, you know, what is it about Yom Kippur? This whole section. This whole section in uh, Leviticus 16, 1 to 34, has to do with the Feast of Yom Kippur. You know what happened on Yom Kippur? This is the day where atonement was made for the entire nation through a blood atonement. But here's the thing. It has to do with two goats. Okay? One goat is offered up completely. Yeshua who gave his life completely for us. And the other goat was sent away. And that represents how Yeshua takes our sins away. So you see there's two goats for a reason. There was two goats when Yeshua went to the, right before he went to the cross. He, remember, he's, uh, he was, uh, I think it was Pilate who tried to spare his life. So he said, you know, I released one prisoner to you. Uh, shall I release releases Barabbas who killed Romans, or shall I release Yeshua, your king? <laughs> See, the thing is, Yeshua was the son of God. Bar Barabbas means the son of God, the son of the Father. Yeshua is the son of the Father. Barabbas, the son of the Father, like two goats. Yeshua was offered up. And Barabbas was sent away, symbolic of who takes our sins away. Okay. Yeah, and, the, and there's so much in the story and the sacrifice of Yom Kippur 
that teaches us about what happened on the last days yeah. I mean, when Yeshua was going to the cross. Even in the crowning of him, where they put a crown of thorns on him, and they, the Romans laid their hands on him, and the Jews laid their hands on him. Because all the, the, the sacrifice of Yom Kippur has to do with putting your hands upon the animal and your sins being laid upon the animal. Now guess what? All of our sins were laid upon Yeshua. Jew and Gentile, everybody laid their hands upon him. And they punched him. And they tore his beard out. And they, and they whipped him with a cat of nine tails. He took every sin that ever was upon him. That ever would be. Okay? That he did for us. So that he could then go into glory. He took our sins away. And what happened? He resurrected he took our sins away, he resurrected, and and he went into glory. He you know, so that's again Aharemot, he died, took the end of the portion, and he became holy in a very, very powerful way. Um Okay, I'm gonna just lead to page three here. Throughout the scriptures, trouble comes first, then comes to peace and joy and holiness. Um there's, I have all sorts of information about what happened, what what the Yom Kippur sacrifice is. You know, uh, only one time, only one time on page five, um, could the high priest go into beyond the veil, into where the Ark of the Covenant was, and sprinkle blood. Okay, of of this lamb. That, that was that was uh, actually it's the goat and and other animals too that were offered up for the atonement of Israel for the atonement for salvation atonement means they're covered you're covered by the blood okay so uh, why why only one time I could just like leave it at that okay yeah that's only one time they could go every year. Because on Yom Kippur, okay. Well, uh, I'm not going to leave it, leave you like that, okay. Because because on that day, the, all that that you know what that veil represented. You remember we just talked about the veil in the story. There's a veil covering their eyes. You know what's on that veil? Cherubim. Remember what was stationed in front of the tree of life after Adam and and, and Eve sinned. It was an angel, a carouf, to block their way so they couldn't live forever by eating of that tree of life, which was Yeshua, which is the throne of God to live forever. Yeshua said, I am the resurrection and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me because he is the tree of life. Okay, do you understand this? Because... Before, you had to go beyond the veil. And only once, and only can the high priest go. Okay, the high priest represents Yeshua in the future, who would be our high priest. Remember when he went before the, the scribes and Pharisees, and they, and uh, actually before the high priest, and he tore his robe? Do you know that according to the scripture, the Torah, if you tear your robe, you're no longer the high priest. He made Yeshua the high priest. Okay, when he tore his robe. Okay, the high priest tore his robe. Okay, so, you know, he could go into into that beyond that that and offer the blood. Okay, the, the high priest only once a year, but Yeshua forever. Why do you think that that curtain got torn from top to bottom? Because now everybody has access to the throne of God. Everybody has access. That room was a square room. It's symbolic of the New Jerusalem. It's symbolic of, of the, the number 40 is in, in Hebrew is the word for square. Okay? Meaning that it's the time of testing and the time of perfecting. When you reach 40, you rest. Remember when Yeshua was in the wilderness for 40 days and on the 40th day, angels came to minister to him. Okay? Again, 40 having to do with 
connected to the square. That room that we now have access to through the blood of Yeshua. Okay, he he was the curtain. He was ripped to pieces for us. He was shred for us. He was tortured for us. He took all sin upon himself. He became the curtain. And the curtain was taken out of the way. Because he took it away. He took our sin away. And now we have access to God's throne. We have access to heaven. Always. To sit in heavenly places with Messiah. Okay, so. Um, you know, our prayers go up. And there's an incense altar. But in that room, once a year, the high priest would bring a shovel with hot coals. And on top of the coals, he would throw incense. And it created smoke. It'd be smoking in there. <laughs> in that room. Okay, with, with the incense. Okay? It's our prayers that go up to the throne. We go, Our prayers go directly to his throne. Amen. Because of our access to the throne. They go directly to the throne in heaven. Our prayers. Think about that. Praise you the know, Lord. God hears it. Okay, that's our prayers. He inhabits the praises of the people. He hears our praise. He loves our praise. He can't get enough of it. They're all like celebrating and dancing in heaven while we're singing. We're thinking, oh, I'm hoping we're getting into his presence. And you know, it's like, <laughs> it's like, they're all like celebrating. You know, we're like, you know, if we saw what was going on, we would probably continue to keep praising and not stop ever. But well, of course we have to stop. You know, we're still in the realm of time, so to speak. But one of these days, by the way, the, the glory of the Lord is going to get so thick, the presence of the Lord is going to be so strong that none of us are going to want to stop praising Him. Okay, I listen. This is what the days that are coming. I'm looking forward to those days. Are you ready? Oh, look, look at there's a, look. It's a cloud in the room. Okay, it's the cloud of glory. And the unlimited and anything and the miracles, signs and wonders and healings and, and people getting set free and, you know, we're going to see the unlimited. This belongs to us. This is our inheritance. Yeah. We are the children of God. Yeah. And God said, you are holy as I am holy. He's going to make us holy. We, we choose to be holy. We can choose or we can give in and be like everybody else in the world. Be holy as I am holy. Okay. Um. Okay, going down, uh, I, this is not as long as last week's, it was 18 pages. So let's go to page 8. So we talked about, about the, the double portion that after the death means Nadav uh, and which means that, uh, that the generous and willing he was to bring us back to the Father through his death. Okay. Now, uh, holy. We think, let me ask you, what do you think about what the word holy means? Perfect. See, that's what most people think. But actually, yes and no. Yes, the way God sees perfect is not the way we see perfect. Okay. But in reality, all it means is that we are different, yeah. like he is different. We're not like everybody else. Be who you are before God, seeking his face, hungry and thirsty and desperate for him. Okay, we don't turn to idols. Like the Shabbat is consecrated, it's hallowed. He said, holy shall you be, for holy am I. Yehovah, your Elohim. Okay. He says, don't slander or gossip. Treat animals good. Take care of the trees. Don't make seed. Okay. Uh, follow his Shabbat. Follow his Mishpatim. Follow his Gugim. Okay. And you will be holy as I am holy. That's, a, that's what it says on page 9. Okay. Uh, it's from Leviticus. Okay. Don't be like everybody else. But he said, treat the animals good. Treat the trees good. Don't mix mix certain trees, you know, don't mix fabrics. Now, I don't know if any of you like to sew, but really you shouldn't mix fabrics, like polyester maybe with cotton, I don't know, okay? But you gotta be careful on mixing fabrics, mixing seed, 
where you create breeds of animals try mixing a camel with a dog or something. God forbids it. Because of what these animals represent something. They teach us something. Okay? And he says, be holy as I am holy. Everything has its place. Everybody has their place. Okay? Don't try to push your way on somebody else. Let the Holy Spirit deal with them to change their own ways. We don't we're not supposed to be pushing our ways on people. That's not going to bring people to the Lord. No, they got to be jealous and envious. They're going to be drawn to our life. We're going to go out there and they're going to see, you know, and they're going to want to come to the Lord, okay? What makes us sanctified? What separates us? What makes us holy? Like Him, okay? He gave us all the tools He told us. And uh, He said, take care of the widows, the poor, the orphans. Okay, we, we need to take care of a foreigner. If a foreigner is joining your people, don't treat him less. Love him. Love the foreigner. Because you were a foreigner in the land of Israel. I'm sorry, in the land of Egypt. Okay. Uh, look at Vaikra 20, 23. Leviticus 20, 23. Toward the end of these two questions, it says this. Do not follow the traditions of the nations that I expel from before you. From before you, All these abominations they did, and I was disgusted with them. You know what the word disgusted means? By va a kuts. The last two letters, a kut, and the Sadi literally mean the end. They drove me to want to destroy them all. At the end, he's going to destroy all the people that were wicked. But what I'm saying is, he drove me to think about the end when I destroy all the wickedness. Okay? When he destroyed the earth by a flood, it came, it was just so wicked. Okay, you know what I mean? When evil is winning, it drives God to want to destroy. But there's another side to it. It also raises up the level. The holy get more holier, and the wicked get more wicked. Okay, well, I'm telling you something. This is all about to happen again, but not in the same way. Not in a destructive way. He's going to expose all that's done in the darkness. That's about to happen. Okay, and and it's it's his glory is about to rise up upon those who are his. Okay, so we're we're going to see an end of abortion. We're going to see an end of of child trafficking. We're going to see an end. To all this stuff that we've been seeing, we're going to see an end to to evil being proclaimed, money being given to nations to kill babies, and all this other stuff. Okay, abominable things. God is going to bring it to judgment. But He says, "Do not follow the traditions of the nations that I expel from before you." That means religion. That means satanic worship. And by the way, anything that is not from the word of God is satanic. And that could be denominations as well. God is not pleased with religion. Religion kills spirit, the spirit. Okay? Or organized structure. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't people in every congregation, in every kind of denomination. I'm not saying that there aren't his remnant are not there. They're there. But they got to come out of it. God is finished with denominations. He's finished with structures of men that put limits on his spirit. There's no denominations in heaven. Exactly. There's only one faith, one doctrine, one belief, according to Ephesians chapter 4. Okay? So, I'm not trying to come against religions. I'm just saying that the religious structures of men are not from God. They are satanic because they come from men. They're either from men or from Satan. Okay? We have to watch out, and we gotta purge the evil from us, from our own hearts. Okay, and and we're not being holy when we're following the teachings of men over God's teachings, over His Word. Okay, and that's what the Torah says. Okay, He does not want us to follow the pagan nations. He he, there's no holiness in those ways. The way God feels about it is the way we should feel about it. John ten. Two and three. I'm sorry. 
Jeremiah 10, 2 and 3. Boy, I'm a little off here. Okay, Jeremiah 10, 2 and 3. Thus says Jehovah, do not learn the way of the nations. Do not be terrified by the signs of the heavens, although the nations are terrified by them. For the customs of the peoples are delusion, because they talk about wood cut cut out from the forest, the work of the hands of the craftsmen with the cutting tool. In other words, making an idol. Uh, basically, the rest of this describes sort of what today we would call a Christmas tree, although we know that when people decorate trees with gold and silver and all that, that they don't know that uh, that this comes from idolatry, but this is the history of it. Okay, when people make Christmas trees, I'm sure in some way they're trying to honor God, maybe, many of them. Yes. Right. However, it comes, it's rooted out, it comes from paganism. We shouldn't have any part. He says, he tells us, the Lord is saying, do not learn the way of the nation. Okay, don't don't follow them. Okay. And then Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one or love the other and love the other, or he will hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. For this reason I say to you. Do not be anxious for, for your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, but for, not, nor for the body as to what you will put on. It is not, it's not life more than food and the body than clothing. Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor they reap, they gather into, nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth more than they? And which of you, for being anxious, can add a single cubit to his lifespan? And why are you anxious about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you, not even Solomon in all his glory did not clothe himself like one of these. But if God so arrays the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more do so for you, O men of little faith? Do not be anxious then, saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink? With what shall we clothe ourselves? For all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. Now he says this, do you hear that? Mm. He says, for all these things the Gentiles eagerly seek. These are the words of Yeshua. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of these things. But first, seek first his kingdom and its righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Therefore, do not be anxious for tomorrow, for tomorrow has its, will care for itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. In other words, seek ye first the kingdom. Don't follow the ways of men. Don't act like men do. Don't be anxious. Chapter 10, 5 to 7. These 12 Yeshua sent out. And instructed them, said, said, Do not go in the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leopards, cast out demons. Freely you receive, freely give. Okay? So, you know, God is, is wanting us to seek his face, to follow his ways. Do not follow the ways that religion has taught you. The structures of men have taught you. All the denominations of men have taught you. That means if you don't, don't know anything else, then say, okay, let me learn the truth. What makes us holy? His, his word, his mission theme. His instructions, His Torah, that makes us, but by doing them by the Spirit, we hear them and we do them by the Spirit. Yes. Okay. I, it's not. It's not about religion. It's not about. You know what? It's between you and the Lord. I have these studies here on these pages for you to study for yourself, for you to see 
that what I'm saying is true. It's not from me, it's from the Lord. Yeshua told us this over and over again. We are tradition people. We are trapped in our traditions because all we know, unless we say, I don't want the traditions anymore if it's going to limit me, I want the spirit. But, you know, our family's not going to understand because they like this and they like that. You know what? Then let them deal with it. You don't participate in it. You can love them. You can be with them. But you make a stand and you be different. You be holy as he is holy. Be different. He's coming for a bride without spot or blemish that is not caught up in religious structures that put limitations on God. God has a way. He has a calendar. He has a system. There's multitudes of these calendars, multitudes of ages around these calendars. Let's get to know his way so we can hear his voice and not be distracted by all the structures around us, even the internet and the uh, email and all this other stuff. Okay? This glory is about to come. Okay? He wants people that are going to really search him out and get to know him and say, I want more of him. I don't want to follow my own ways. I want to follow his ways. James 1 27 will finish with, with that. I know it's getting late, but we started late too. I never remember where James is. Before Peter, right? Okay, James. Yes, before Peter. Yes. That's your keepers. Yes, James, yeah, James 1 27. Okay. And this is pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father to visit the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Now, we all know the part where he says, Yeah, take care of the widows and orphans. Oh, I do that. Okay. But what about the rest of it? Keep yourself unstained from the world. What is the world system? We're following the, when we follow religion and denominations, we're following the world systems. Everybody else is doing the same thing. Maybe not everybody. Maybe unbelievers are, are living a life of sin. But what I'm talking about is we keep ourselves unstained from ways of men. Keep yourself unstained. Let's find out what the truth is. And the truth will set you free. Okay? Look at what it says. Uh, this is the hot tar portrait on page 10. Okay, this is what it says. Um, I gave this on the bottom, verse 11, Yehezkel or Ezekiel 20, 11 and 12. And I gave them my statutes and showed them my judgments, and if a man does it, he shall even live in them. Moreover, also I gave them my Shabbats to be assigned between me and them, that they might know that I am Yehovah. Who makes them holy, who sanctifies them. Okay? So he gave us the way. He says, I gave them my statute, which is which is, if you look at what statutes is on the top of page eleven, it's ordinances, enactments, okay? That's the appointed things, the festivals, the calendar. I gave them my judgments, which is righteous judgment. Judging righteously. Okay. Uh, deciding cases by the word of God. Okay. And if a man does them, then that's the word asa. So we have mishpat, we have chukim, or the statutes, the judgments. And we, if a man does it, the word asa, he shall live in them. He will live forever. Okay, that's basically what it says. He will live forever. Now, we know only through the blood of the Messiah that we live forever. But in the statutes and the judgments, uh, it teaches us his ways. The, the Torah and the Bible is book a books on righteousness. And you know what? The whole world wants to say, okay, well, we're through with that. We don't need that anymore. We have Jesus. And the reality is they're throwing away God's righteous standards. Okay? And they're, and they're doing whatever they want to do. And they're no different than the rest of the world. But God never said, Messiah never got rid of these things. 
He basically said, do this looking to me. Do this in remembrance of me. When you look to this, live differently. Live as I live, to honor my Father. Be one as I am one. Okay, God wants us to follow his righteous standards. Not, we don't have to sacrifice anymore, thank goodness. That's gone. Messiah took that away, right? Aren't you glad? It's a better covenant. But that doesn't get rid of everything else, all the festivals and everything like that. It, it just means that now through his blood, can we do the entire Torah by the Spirit? By the Spirit. You know, only through him can we do all things. Through Messiah, we can do all things through Messiah. Okay, so uh, point of this at the end, on the last page. Would not, uh, this is what I wrote, okay? This is kind of the word that the Lord gave me for everybody here. We, the people of God, have settled on being like everyone else. When we don't speak against evil and wickedness out of fear or even compromise, we fail to be any different from the world. God said, be holy as I am holy. He told us what is holy and what is not holy. You know, it is long past time for discernment, learning the difference between the things of God and the things of the world. It is time for maturity, growth, and the knowledge of God and his Messiah. True, hearing and observing his word, his instruction, and righteousness, his love revealed in us. From our own free will to get activated, it is time to stop playing religious and denominational games. His glory will not appear on anything else. Achare mot. After death, the exposing of evil and hidden wickedness comes holiness, the appearing of his glory, power, and prosperity in and on a people like him who is holy as he is holy, upon humble, broken vessels who are hungry, thirsty, and longing for him. These glory people do not look like people in the world systems of men. Time for a major change for the body of Messiah to be ready to meet with their God, to meet their God. Amen. That's what he's doing in us. we got to change our ways. Everything you have known before, God is going to shake everything. The last act before he comes is a shaking of everything. Even heaven will be shaken. It's the final act. It's the apostolic act of God to shake everything. He's about to shake everything very soon. Not like that. There's going to be one final shaking at the end. But this shaking that's coming is going to get us ready for the finish, for the for the change is about to occur, for our being moving into the next level. Glory to glory. We're getting to know ourselves. Okay, get ready. Okay. Abba, Lord, I just I lift up to you everybody here, Lord, and everybody who's watching online. Abba, I ask that you would just help everybody understand what it is the difference between being holy and not being holy. Uh, but to be like you told us to be in the spirit and in, in spirit and in truth. In your word and in the spirit. It's the truth, the word that sets us free. And the spirit leads us into all truth. Hallelujah. They work together. Uh, but Yeshua is the word of God. And yet the Holy Spirit dwells within the word of God. And the Father's teaching said, is through Yeshua, Lord. And he gave us an example of our Father in heaven. You know, when, when Thomas, Lord, asked, asked you, show us the Father, ask Yeshua. And Yeshua said, you have been with me all this time. You do not know that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. You have seen the Father through Yeshua. Abba, I ask, Lord, that you would Make us holy as you are holy, Lord, and change us, Lord, and help us, Lord, to see by the Spirit and not be caught up in religious games and religious structures, even Jewish religious structures. I don't even care for Jewish religious structures. I just want your truth, your truth that sets us free, and I want the Spirit, Lord. Abba, all of us should be wanting to follow you the way you designed it, not to follow the teachings of men. Abba, as we've been following all the denominations and structures, there's one way with you, Lord. There's one doctrine, one belief. We are outside the boxes of man. We want where we want to be where there's more of you, Lord. We, You have given us, Lord. You tore the veil down, Lord, through the blood of Yeshua, Lord, that we have access to the throne. 
Come and teach us, Lord. You are our rabbi. Come and teach us, Lord. Your students here, down here, your tummy dean, that we might be ready and become everything you intend us to be, and we will be a bride, fitly, fitly made for you, Lord, and holy as you are holy, Abba, a perfect match, hallelujah, a perfect match for our Messiah, in Yeshua's name. Prophetic and glory. This is prophetic. The glory is coming. We're ready to step into it. Yehovah bless you and keep you. Yehovah lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. Yehovah lift up his face upon you and give you peace. In the name of our Sar Shalom, our Prince of Peace, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah, the, the olive and the top, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, I wait, we wait for you to establish your justice in this country and many other countries, Lord, and bring about this great reversal from the evil that has been allowed uh, until it's it's come and exposed itself, Lord, like a uh, a leprous sore that's red, Abba. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that it's going it's going now. Lord, all be revealed soon, Abba, and and Lord, may we be ready to give an answer for all those people that are going to be looking for the answers in the name of Yeshua. Shabbat shalom. And oh, one more thing, the closing blessing for the Torah. Baruch atah Yehovah, Eloheinu melech olam, asher natan lanu tovat emet v'chai olam nata betochenu. Baruch atah Yehovah, noten atorah. Amen. Blessed are you, Yehovah, the Lord, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us the Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, Yehovah, giver of the Torah. Amen. And Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom.